George Washington was born on Pope's Creek Estate near present-day Colonial Beach in Westmoreland County, Virginia. According to the Julian calendar, Washington was born on February 11, 1731. The Gregorian calendar, however, adopted within the British Empire in 1752, renders his birth date as February 22, 1732. In George's youth, the Washingtons were moderately prosperous members of the Virginia middle class. His father died of a sudden illness in April 1734 when George was 11 years old, and his half-brother Lawrence became a surrogate father and role model. As a young man, George had red hair. George was an excellent dancer and frequently attended the theater, often referencing Shakespeare in letters. George talked of securing an appointment in the Royal Navy for him when he was 15, but was dropped when his widowed mother objected. In 1749, at the age of 17, George began his career as a professional surveyor. He received a commission and surveyor's license from the College of William and Mary and became the official surveyor of the newly formed Culpeper County. For the next four years, George worked surveying land in western Virginia and for the Ohio Company. George began his military service in the North American Theater of the Seven Years' War, known as the French and Indian War, as a major in the militia of the British province of Virginia. In 1753, he was sent as an ambassador from the British Crown to the French officials and aboriginals as far north as present-day Erie, Pennsylvania. Robert Dinwiddie, Lieutenant Governor of Colonial Virginia, ordered Washington to deliver a letter asking the French to vacate the Ohio Valley in late 1753. He delivered the letter to the local French commander, Jacques Laguerre de Saint-Pierre, who politely refused to leave. On May 28, 1754, George and some of his militia unit, aided by their Mingo allies, ambushed the French in what has come to be called the Battle of Jumonville Glen. The French responded by attacking and capturing George at Fort Necessity in July of 1754. However, he was allowed to return with his troops to Virginia. Both France and Great Britain were ready to fight for control for the region and both sent troops to North America in 1755. War was formally declared in 1756. In 1755, George became the senior American aide to British General Edward Braddock on the ill-fated Braddock expedition. This was the largest British expedition to the colony and was intended to expel the French from the Ohio country. After suffering devastating casualties, the British panicked and retreated in disarray. However, George rode back and forth across the battlefield, rallying the remnants of the British and Virginia forces into an organized retreat. He had two of his horses shot from underneath him while his coat was pierced with four bullets. In 1758, George participated in the Forbes expedition to capture Fort Dequenze. He was embarrassed by a friendly fire episode in which his unit and another British unit thought the other was a French enemy in open fire, with 14 dead and 26 wounded in the mishap. George was not involved in any other major fighting on the expedition. Following the expedition, he retired from his Virginia Regiment commission in December of 1758. On January 6, 1759, Washington married the wealthy widow, Martha Danbridge Cutsis. Together, the two raised her two children from her previous marriage. George and Martha never had any children of their own. The newlywed couple moved to Mount Vernon, where he took up the life of a planter and a political figure. As a respected military hero and a large landowner, he held local office and was elected to the Virginia Provincial Legislature, representing Frederick County in the House of Burgess for seven years beginning in 1758. Washington played a leading military and political role in the American Revolution. His involvement began in 1767 when he first took political stands against the various acts of the British Parliament. He opposed the 1765 Stamp Act. He began taking a lead role in the growing colonial resistance when protests against the Townsend Acts became widespread. In May of 1769, George introduced a proposal drafted by his friend George Mason calling for Virginia to boycott English goods until the acts were repealed. Parliament repealed the Townsend Acts in 1770. In July of 1774, he chaired the meeting at which the Fairfax Resolves were adapted, which called for the convening of a Continental Congress, among other things. In August, George attended the first Virginia Convention, where he was selected as a delegate to the first Continental Congress. After the battles of Lexington and Concord near, near Boston in April 1775, the colonies went to war. George appeared at the Second Continental Congress in a military uniform, signaling that he was prepared for war. George had the prestige, military experience, charisma, 
and military bearing of a military leader and was known as a strong patriot. Congress created a Continental Army on June 14, 1775. Nominated by John Adams, George was then appointed as full general and commander-in-chief. He recruited regulars and assigned Prussian general Baron von Steuben to train the Continental Army. Eventually, he found other capable officers, such as General Nathan Green, General Daniel Morgan, Artillery Chief Colonel Henry Knox, and Chief of Staff Colonel Alexander Hamilton. George assumed command of the Continental Army in the field of Cambridge, Massachusetts in July 1775 during the ongoing Siege of Boston. In August of 1776, British General William Howe launched a massive naval and land campaign designed to siege New York. The Continental Army under Washington engaged the enemy at the Battle of Long Island. Washington was badly defeated. After conferring with other generals of the situation, a plan of retreat was decided. In little time, Washington's army, under the cover of darkness, crossed the East River safely to Manhattan Island and did so without the loss of life or material. Washington then continued to fight across New Jersey. On the night of December 25, 1776, Washington staged a comeback with a surprise attack on a Hessian outpost in western New Jersey. He led his army across the Delaware River to capture nearly 1,000 Hessians in Trenton. Washington followed up with his victory at Trenton with another over British regulars at Princeton in early January. The British retreated to New York City. In February 1777, the Washington's army was encamped in Morristown, New Jersey. By the summer of 1777, Washington had rebuilt his strength and his confidence. He stopped using raids and went on large-scale confrontations, as at Brandywine, Germantown, Monmouth, and Yorktown. Washington's army of 11,000 went into winter quarters at Valley Forge, north of Philadelphia, in December 1777. The next spring, a revitalized army emerged from Valley Forge in good order, thanks in part to a full-scale training program supervised by General von Steuben. The British evacuated Philadelphia to New York in June 1778. George decided to make a partial attack on the retreating British at the Battle of Monmouth. General Charles Lee and French-born General Marcus Lafayette moved with 4,000 men, attempted to launch but bungled the first attack at the British rearguard. When nightfall came, the fighting came to a stop and the British continued their retreat and headed towards New York, where George soon moved his army just outside that city. George moved his headquarters from Middlebrook, New Jersey, up to New Windsor on the Hudson River with an army of 10,000. The British, led by Sir Henry Clinton, made a move up the Hudson against American posts at Van Plunk's Point and Stony Point. In July 1780, 5,000 veteran French troops, led by Comte de Rochambeau, arrived at Newport, Rhode Island to aid the war effort. Though it was Washington's hope initially to bring the Allied fight to New York and end the war there, de Grassi was advised by Rochambeau that Cornwallis in Virginia was a better target. George immediately saw the advantage created, made a move with his force towards Clinton in New York, and then headed south to Virginia. George's Continental Army delivered the final blow to the British in 1781 after a French naval victory allowed American French forces to trap the British Army in Virginia, preventing reinforcements from the north. The surrender at Yorktown on October 19, 1781 marked the end of the major fighting in continental North America. With the initial peace treaty articles ratified in April, a recently formed Congressional Committee under Alexander Hamilton was considering needs and plans for a peacetime army. On May 2, 1783, the Commander-in-Chief submitted his sentiments on a peace establishment to the committee, essentially providing an official Continental Army position. The original proposal was defeated in Congress, with a version also being rejected in April 1784. By the Treaty of Paris, signed in September, Great Britain recognized the independence of the United States. George disbanded his army and on November 2nd gave an eloquent farewell address to his soldiers. On December 23rd, 1783, he resigned his commission as Commander-in-Chief. King George III called Washington the greatest character of the age. George's retirement to personal business at Mount Vernon was short-lived. After much reluctance, he was persuaded to attend the Continental Convention in Philadelphia during the summer of 1787 as a delegate from Virginia, where he was elected as the president of that convention. He held considerable criticism of the Articles of Confederation of the 13 colonies. George's view for a need for a strong federal government grew out of the recent war. The general populace, however, did not share George's views of a strong federal government binding the states together. George's participation in the debates was minor, although he did cast his vote when called upon. 
The Electoral College unanimously elected George as the first president in 1789 and began and again in 1792. On April 30, 1789, George was inaugurated, taking the first presidential oath of office on the balcony of Federal Hall in New York City. The first United States Congress voted to pay George a salary of 25000 a year. George initially declined the salary, valuing his image as a selfless public servant. At the urging of Congress, however, he ultimately accepted the payment. He preferred the title Mr. President to the more majestic names proposed by the Senate, such as Electoral Highness. After serving a second term, George refused to stand for a third term. George Washington's farewell address was one of the most influential statements of republicanism drafted primarily by Washington himself with the help of Alexander Hamilton. It gives advice on the necessity and importance of national union, the value of the constitution and the rule of law, the evils of political parties, and the proper virtues of a republican people. The address warned against foreign influence in domestic affairs and American meddling in European affairs. He cautioned against permanent allies, permanent alliances with any portion of the foreign world, saying the United States must concentrate primarily on American interests. After retiring from the presidency in March 1797, George returned to Mount Vernon with a profound sense of relief. He devoted much of his time to his plantations and other business interests including his distillery which produced its first batch of spirits in February 1797. By 1798, relations with France had deteriorated to the point that war seemed imminent, and on July 4, 1798, President Adams offered Washington a commission as Lieutenant General and Commander-in-Chief of the armies raised or to be raised for service in a prospective war. He accepted and served as Senior Officer of the United States Army from July 13, 1798 until his death. He participated in the planning of provincial army to meet any emergency that might arise, but avoided involvement in details as much as possible. He delegated most of his work, including leadership of the army, to Alexander Hamilton, then serving as Major General in the U.S. Army. Since no French army invaded the United States during this period, George did not assume a field command. On Friday the 13th, December 1799, George Washington awoke with a severe sore throat and became increasingly sick as the day progressed. On Saturday, he suddenly awoke with severe difficulty breathing and almost completely unable to speak or swallow. George Washington died at his home around 10 p.m. on Saturday, December 14, 1799 at the age of 67. The diagnosis of George's final illness and immediate cause of his death have been subjects of debate since the day he died. Throughout the world, people were saddened by George Washington's death. In the United States, memorial processions were held in major cities and thousands were mourning for months. In France, First Consul Napoleon Bonaparte ordered 10 days of mourning throughout the country. George Washington moved his headquarters from Myrtle Brook, New Jersey to New Windsor on the Hudson River. 